What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Casey, and if you are new here, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So I have an updated bleaching and plucking tutorial for you guys. Just that it's something a little bit different this time around that I find works. Um, it makes a pretty significant change, in my opinion. So right now, I'm working with this unit for one of my clients. Um, we are going to... It's a closure unit this time. Um, a 5x5 five five closure. And the knots on this unit are really small, even in the middle. They're really small. So I'm really loving how this wig was put together. And the hairline is, of course, pre-plucked. <clears throat> and the lace, we are working with medium brown lace today. So just want to show you guys. And the wig is 28 inches and is 200% density. The reason you want your knots to be small is because it gives for a more natural look when you go to install. It's easier to bleach the knots and it's easier to pluck out as well. And it just means that usually if the knots are are smaller, it's the wig is put together really well. So I just use some water to a spritz of water just to pull the hair back so that it holds down the flyaways so that you don't get them bleached. So today I'm using BW2 bleach. Um, it's only bleach I have left right now, so that's what I'm going to use. And 40% develop, developer because that's the only developer I have left as well. But typically I would recommend if you're new to this, you use a 30 volume developer. 40% developer is much stronger and it will develop faster and you might over bleach your knots. And this is blue dye and this is to color correct um, to cancel out some of the orange and I'll show you how to use that later. So we're going in with the bleach. I'm using one part bleach one part, to one part 40% um, developer. Now the reason I'm using the blue dye in this, um, in this powder, as you will see soon, is because I want the, I find that BW2 is very orange. I typically don't use BW2, I use Quick Blue and I'll put a picture of it right here. If you wanna purchase, if you'd like to purchase that as well, this is what it looks like. Um, Quick Blue has an agent in it that um, cancels out some of the orange for you while processing the dye on the lace as opposed to the b2w it's very dusty i don't like it at all that much at all but this is all i have so i'm just going to use it it still does gets the job done it just takes a little bit of twerking to make to ensure that the lace is like not too over orange or anything like that and so if that's all you have around you at least i'm showing you what you can do to avoid that as well so you want to mix this into a nice icing consistency. So basically like whipped cream, like whipped icing. So it shouldn't be thin. It should be pretty thick so it's it spreads smoothly. I'd like to mention while, when adding the developer, go in gradually. Even if it's one part, try half a part first to see the consistency you get. If that's not enough, you can always go back in with more developer or go back in with more powder to get the right consistency you need. The measuring scoop is found in the bleach container, so you don't have to worry about trying to get your own measurements. The scoop is in the bleach container when you purchase it. I'm going to go in with the blue dye. I'm putting in two drops at first, and then we're going to work that in. The blue dye is to cancel out some of the orange. So blue cancels out orange, okay? So blue cancels out orange. So I'm using the blue to help with when I put the bleach on the lace that it helps like minimize the amount of orange brass that comes off of the B b2w bleach and now i'm going in with a spoon because a plastic spoon because i don't want to be clocked on here people talking about oh you're not supposed to use a metal spoon i'm not putting this on anyone's head so the chemical reaction that you would essentially get that is doesn't really happen to be honest with you but it can, so for any possibilities, please use a plastic spoon instead of a metal spoon. Although this way, is, although you're not putting the bleach on someone's head actually, but either way, just for the the bleach police, <laughs> I'm using a plastic spoon today. So when you put the bleach in the unit, the reason I'm using a spoon is because the spoon has a curvature, like the wig art, like the wig has, and it's easier to 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 spread it in there. And you want to go in with a very light hand. You don't want to press at all. You just want to kind of slide it across the lace because we're not trying to bleach any of the hair. We're just trying to get the laces from black to brown, like, you know, to match a scalp look, to give a scalp effect. So that's what we want. You guys, always start um, spreading the bleach on the 
middle the back of the knots as opposed to the front because the front knots are thin always smaller and they always bleach faster so you want to start with the thicker knots which is usually in the middle and then put the bleach on the front knots because you will end up over bleaching the front knots and the middle knots may not be fully bleached out so you don't want to run into that issue now that all the bleach is on i'm just showing you guys that it's already starting to bleach because the knots are so small and i am using 40 percent developer you can see that the knots are already turning like they're already browning up like they're already turning a shade lighter than black so now i'm just using a foil i'm actually just placing the foil in the unit the foil is going to obviously help with the chemical reaction um it has a chemical reaction to the bleach where it's going to warm the bleach up so that it can continue bleaching so this is after 15 minutes of leaving the the bleach sitting there to um, bleach the rest of the knots and this is the outcome so it is fully bleached as you can see the knots are all brown and that's what you're looking for you're looking for the the knots to be brown like lightened up and so that's how you know it's ready to be washed out if you notice that even after like 30 minutes the knots are still not fully bleached out i would still suggest washing the wig out even if you have to go back in with bleach again I would suggest washing it out, washing it out, shampooing it, leaving it in conditioner for a while, drying it, and then perhaps going back in with the bleach again for maybe another 15 minutes. It's just, you don't want it to sit too long because it will weaken the follicles of the hair. And you'll find that literally if it's over bleached, even when the knots are not turning, the hair will weaken and it'll start, it'll, it'll leave bald spots in your closure so you'll you'll find that when you comb the closure out it'll just start losing hair and if it's over bleaching you don't want that if the follicles are too tender so i'm going in with my beyond brilliance pantene proveen um, toning shampoo and this is what i use to tone all my lace closures out i've been using it for a few months now i find it works the best for me and so that's what i've been using so i let this sit in the toning shampoo to do its job it sits there for about 10 minutes or so, and then I'll wash it out. So what I use to wash my wigs out, I go in with the Aussie brand. So Aussie, um, it's in a purple shampoo bottle. I'll show you in a second. So I use the Aussie and I use the Aussie conditioner as well. Aussie conditioner, I love. It's what I use for all my wigs. Unless I run out, then I'll use something else. But typically, that's what I'll always use. I find it to be inexpensive and it really works well. So this is what the lace is looking like now that it's washed out. You see like all the knots are completely changed and it's giving very much scalp at this point. So that's what I'm always looking for. I don't always have this, um, like it's trial and error. Depending on the closure, some will have still little black spots and some will not. But I knew this closure was going to be really good and give me very little trouble because how small the knots were. So it was like, I, I just knew it would come out like this. But don't worry if yours don't doesn't come out exactly like this on the first try. It will take trial and error. It's not all, it's not your fault. It's literally dependent on the closure. Some take forever. Some will give you a hard time. It's always good to invest in a quality unit because you're going to quality units will always guarantee you a nice closure. At least at the very least, it's going to give you a nice closure. Don't buy cheap hair and then expect the closure to be popping like it's not always the case and it's going to give you a hard time because the knots are going to be big as they're going to be big and it's going to not bleach fast it's not going to bleach very well at all and you're going to be like how come mine doesn't look like that that's the reason <laughs> okay so just remember what i said Okay, I always say you'll need a mannequin head, okay? I suggest one that is your head size. I have a video that shows you how to measure your head so that you know what mannequin size to buy. 
Um, so right now I put it on and there is three lines that come on this unit in the front. I'm going to show you in a second. The middle and there's two lines to the side. So the middle is where I'm going to part the unit down the middle. And I always part the units down the middle because that will indicate that that's where the middle part goes. And so that you do not want to over pluck in the middle area at the, at the hairline that much at all. Because if you do, it'll be over plucked and you'll likely ruin your middle part and won't be able to wear it that way. So I made a part um, to part out where it has already been pre-plucked. So I pluck behind that. I'm not going to pluck where it is plucked yet. I'm going to do some light plucking on it later, but you want to pluck behind that. And you're not going to pluck in the parting. You're going to pluck just behind the parting. Okay, and this is in real speed, real time speed. I haven't sped up the video. This is how slow I pluck. And you can go even slower. You could take your time. Plucking does take a long time. So don't think that you're being slow or, or, or anything like that. Plucking does take a long time to do so it's going to take you some time and and if you pluck correctly you'll get quite a bit of hair that comes out as well so when you pluck your unit when you pluck the closure wet it just after you bleach it the hair will come out a lot easier okay so you have to be very careful you don't want to go too fast because the hair is very tender and it comes out a lot easier which that's why i like doing it wet but then you still have to be careful because you can over pluck and get bald spots. So after every couple strokes, I am going in with my comb and I'm pulling the hair that's already been plucked out so that it doesn't um, deceive me. And I think that it's still there when it's not and, and it can cause a bald spot. So although this is a closure, I do want a frontal like appearance for my client. Um, so that's why you'll see me going in and I'm going to do quite a bit of plucking on it to give a natural hairline, a pushback kind of effect so to make it look like a frontal, but it's not. And to get a frontal look, I am, in, instead of having a frontal to me is ideal. I think that's like a bonus because I prefer closures over frontals, but I do like the natural appearance that a frontal gives. So that's why I like trying to make sure that the closure units give a frontal realistic hairline appearance. So I combed all the hair back now to see how much plucking. This is just how you check how much um, plucking that you actually did. If you need to part it again and do it again, but I'm okay. With, I'm quite happy with how it looks. So I'm just gonna go in lightly and pluck these. There's gonna. I'm gonna zoom in, and you're gonna see little dots of um, hair, like some dots. So I'm just gonna go in and like where the dot, the knots are, where the knots are still there. I'm just gonna go in and remove them. So I'm showing you guys now. So I'm just going to go in and use my tweezer and like remove the knots. So that's a good, sh a good way to um, know where to pluck. If you just go in and just take your tweezer and lightly remove the knots one at a time, you're not going to go in and like bunch a bunch it together because that will give you a spot spot. You're just going to go in lightly, try to find the ones and remove them. And you don't want to remove all of them. Because if you remove every single one of them, you will have bot spots. You're just going to go in and lightly try to remove as many as you think necessary. This is going to take some trial and error to get used to. But you know what? It's 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 a learning process and it's a learning curve and you're, you're going to make mistakes. But if you follow these directions thoroughly, you should be able to get the like a very similar look, even on your first try.
So I'm going to go in and do the same exact steps on the next side. I'm just going to do it sped up, but you guys can watch just to get another angle of how it's done. Um, and every time like it gets a little bit dry, you can just wet it. I use I keep a spray bottle close to me so that I can see where I'm at and see how much I still need to pluck out. So the pre-plucked hairline, again, I'm going to part it and then I'm going to go behind it and start plucking it. So it's going to be a bit sped up but you will still get to see the process fairly well. And keep watching because I'm going to actually show you guys how to prep the hairline for an install, even if it's on yourself or, or if you have a client you want to practice on. I find this being the easiest way to install, like by pre-prepping the hairline before you even put the wig on your client's head. And I will explain when I get there. And you guys, oh my gosh, I am so happy. I've been seeing um, an incline in my subscribers and my views, and I'm so thankful. It lets me know that I'm doing something right, and I really appreciate every each and every single one of you that tune in to watch my videos or find them helpful. And let me know if there's anything that you guys want to learn that I haven't posted on my channel that you guys want to see me do. I will surely be more than happy to do so, like... I'm I'm totally in love with doing this and I will continue teaching you guys whatever it is that you guys might want to learn or you see or, or anything like that. I want to bring you guys so much more content. Um, I'm thinking about doing some vlogging and um, just more content, more hairstyles, maybe even some natural hairstyles. I love it all. So you guys let me know if you're here for that, what you guys want to see. Leave it in the comments. Just let me know. Let's have that conversation. I am... I am answering all comments, so like you ask away and I'm going to be here to answer any of your questions, so feel free. <laughs> and again, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. It means, it means everything to me. So my client wants a middle part, um, dramatic baby hairs, on when I do her install. So right now, since the unit is wet, I'm actually just molding the hair down. So in the part, in the parting style, I might, I will have to probably likely clean it up once I put on her head, but I am just molding it down. This is just a lot easier for me to dry it like this, and then it just, it makes it even flatter. So if you, if you can, I would suggest you mold your wig down, especially if you're doing a middle part before you dry it i have an over the head dryer but i would suggest that you guys let your hair air dry if you don't have an over the head dryer instead of force drying it with a blow dryer just let it air dry and then use a blow dryer and blow it out after when it's dry so now this unit is dry i'm going to show you guys how i prep the wig for for like an install so i'm just taking my flat iron and i'm pushing all the hair back like pushing out of the face, pushing out of the face. So this gives you indication of how much you pluck. You can see what it will look like on your client's head, basically 
right now. Like, you know, so if you feel that it, it still requires more plucking, you can always go in lightly and do some more plucking or you can wait until you actually install it on your client's head, then do the plucking there. But the less work I have to do on the client's head, um, the better, like especially like flat irons and things like that, like the heat of it. You can't obviously um, keep it on the client's head as long as you can a mannequin's head to get it really flat. So I always try to get the, the unit as flat as possible before I even install it so that I can, it's literally just me gluing it down and melting the melting the lace and like lightly using the hot comb to like make sure everything is sleek and flat so what you see me doing right now is parting out the baby hairs i'm using my leger lux um, wax stick to mold the baby hairs and hold down i mean sorry not mold the baby hairs mold the hair and any flyaways to hold them back and things like that so that's what you see me doing here this process i find is easier because all i have to do is plop it on her head I cut the lace off, then I glue it down. That's easier. If you guys want to, I might have to do an updated um, install tutorial as well. Uh, I, that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do an updated install tutorial for you guys. Well, you guys let me know if that's what you want to see. Because it could, it could very well be something you guys don't even want. So <laughs> if it is something you want, you let me know in the comments. And I will, I will do an install, closure install tutorial for you guys. Um, an updated version. Because this... This, what I'm doing here, um, pre-prepping, is not something I used to always do, but I find it to be the easiest, and it gives me the best natural-looking install. And this is medium brown lace. This is not even HD or transparent lace. This is medium brown lace. And the melt I got from this wig, I'll show you guys at the end. I'll show you guys. Don't even worry. I am playing around with the baby hair to see how they would fall if they make sense. I'm not cutting them until it's actually on the client's head or even on my head. This would be the same thing I do if I was to be doing my own hair. Like I would still pre-prep it. It's so much easier, especially if you're doing your own hair. So I found that there still could be um, some hair that could be plucked out for a more realistic hairline. So that's what you see me doing. After it's dried and flat and uh, hot comb back, it's so much easier to see what may need to still be plucked out. So I'm just going in there and doing a few more strokes just to give it, thin it out a little bit for it to give more of a nice natural appearance. So if you followed these instructions correctly and took your time, you should have similar results like this, okay? Very customized and ready to install. And this is what the install looked like. This is what it turned out to look like. Look at how melted that lace is into her skin and it's just a gorgeous install. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please don't forget to give me a like, comment, and share. Thank you. Bye.